Homesickness is like rain falling against your window pane. Sometimes comforting, sometimes sad, sometimes close, sometimes far away. How funny that right this very moment, all the people we love are living lives, whether we can see them physically or not. But though you live yours, you grow and learn and tumble and thrive, they too are tumbling through life elsewhere. Your loved one's lives don't stop because you stop seeing them. A few days ago, I picked out handmade Korean cards and wrote letters to some of the people I love. I wrote my brother his 18-year-old birthday note. I reflected on friendships I've not checked in on for a while. I thought about the fact that long-distance friendships are like long-distance love, and that without effort and love and understanding, they fade. Because no one is static, and we're all moving and learning and growing in our space and lives. How funny. Homesickness is like rain on a window pane. Good morning, happy Wednesday. So today I don't have any classes, but I do have an assignment due and some things to do. So I'm up early, I'm just having my breakfast, and then I'm gonna head out to one of my favorite places I found in Seoul and do some work. This video is also very kindly sponsored by my absolute favorites, Skillshare. Guys, I love this platform so, so much. I just love learning and Skillshare just enriches my life. It is an online community with thousands of courses on everything from productivity to minimalism. It's a space to meet other like-minded creative people. And I just love it. On my commutes, I'm currently watching Chidera, AKA the Slum Flowers Skillshare course, all about confidence, self-empowerment, and owning your authentic voice. It's been really helping me when I struggle with imposter syndrome at uni. The first 1,000 people to click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium for free. I can't tell you how much I love them and I hope you find a course that helps you out. There are certain environments which make studying not a chore but an experience. So much so that I truly love studying. Welcome to my favourite place in Seoul. This cafe was introduced to me by my Korean friend and it's so hidden away, it looks like an office. Normally it's incredibly busy with Korean uni students reading books or working, but I got there right as it opened just to show you around. Part of what makes it so special is that you have to take off your shoes when you enter. I waddle around in my socks and admire the shelves of books and listen to the soft piano music. All the books are in Korean, which motivates me to want to learn more Korean. And the whole atmosphere makes you feel like learning is special. Like you're in this safe space, an environment of like-minded people who just want to sit quietly and read about the world. Welcome to my favorite place I've been in Seoul. <laughs> so at home in this cafe. My Korean friend took me here and it's so hidden. It's by the river, but it's disguised as an office so no one would find it. It makes me feel at home because you have to take off your shoes. <laughs> The first time I came here, there were just Korean students lying here, sleeping, or reading books. I'm currently just doing my to-do listing process to fully plan the day. Got a good mixture of academic work and essay due today at 4pm which needs to be written. Another writing project I'm working on that has a deadline in a few days. I'm gonna write a lot. <laughs> and then exciting back-end and community stuff on the reset challenge that I'm doing. The reset challenge is quite experimentative so I've only really advertised it on Instagram but the community who have joined is so warm. It makes me so happy. I have midterm essays coming up, so I'm currently writing a politics, political science essay. A Korean lady working there came over to me and asked where I got my water bottle from. It was a very proud moment when I knew the word for water bottle.
not gonna lie, I have no idea what I'm doing. That was so stressful, that was horrible. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. There was a massive skyscraper, which was the nearest post office. So then I was directed to this basement underground Korean post office, but I had no idea what I was doing. Everyone was just in there waiting and I had to get a number, but I didn't know how or where I needed to get that number from. And I was clicking on the machine, but everything was in Korean and I was trying to translate it and then people are in the queue behind me. <laughs> oh, stress. So I built up the courage to ask a sweet looking man who was waiting for his uh, post and, and I got out my translation app and was asking him questions like hi how can I buy international stamps and he was so helpful he helped me get a number and I was waiting in the queue nothing is being sent to the UK all flights for post have been suspended which is really sad because I put so much effort into writing these cute letters but hey ho I guess it makes sense but then a testament to this beautiful country and it's lovely people afterwards I came out and I was just sort of looking a bit lost looking out around and this sweet man runs back up the stairs and he's like hi I know some English can I help you at all like with translation he's a student he's been self-studying English for the last two years and there wasn't really much he could do because flights are suspended but he was so lovely so yeah it appears I will not be sending anything cute to the UK anytime soon I think I'm gonna take a photo of them and send them to my family and then they can have the physical copy in a few months I'm now going to head home and me and Gabby, my roommate, are cooking for the vegan cooking group tonight which is exciting but stressful, cooking for so many people. <laughs> I only cook one night a week and then all the other nights of the week someone cooks for me, I go, I get my food. Today I think me and Gabby are going to make curry, so we'll see how that goes. Also this is mapogu, 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 I'm probably butchering that. Um, so I'm going to go get a bus, head home. And it's been an eventful, productive, stressful Wednesday. I'm just doing laundry so I got changed. Down, yeah. I've been feeling so, I've been feeling so down. Every yeah. day. Can you so tell me why? Can you tell I'm me about why? to make curry. Down, yeah. No friends of mine. Hi, amazing. No the head chef. Oh, look at us. Potato <laughs> carrot curry. Yeah, I wanna try myself inside the juice. Yeah, you know I keep on running from the truth. Is that not? I'm just a lonely fucking you. Now when I drive around, don't feel it all. Why is getting Midweek at university. <laughs> Hello, our room is a mess, a very big mess. It's laundry day, we're just gonna ignore it. It's end of week. I'm a little bit drained and dead, but I'm also, I'm just feeling so grateful today it's just been an amazing day intellectually thought-provokingly experience wise thinking about career learning about career my god so today i went to a co-curricular which is what my university runs optionally once a week they have some kind of city experience which teaches you an aspect of the culture or about the history or you learn about a specific company or get experience just something to do with the city that we're in and we have to go to at least one because we write an assignment based off of one of them at the end of the semester about what we've learned culturally that kind of thing but they're amazing and i want to go to as many of them as possible today's one was only available for 10 students and i got on korea a path to democracy the road to democracy 8 a.m to 7 p.m was this hectic scheduled day 
throughout the city with an incredible tour guide, learning how South Korea became South Korea as we know it today. We started at Sodeman Prison. This prison was used by the Japanese in colonial times against Korean liberation activists. I don't know if you know, but Japan colonized Korea. It was extremely brutal. It caused so many issues in the country, so many human rights issues. It also paved the way for the civil war and what now has become North Korea and South Korea. But wow, this prison was heavy. We went down into the prison, we heard the stories of prisoners, we saw some of the torture methods. I'm not going to detail the torture methods for you because I felt physically sick when they were describing them. The use of lighting, the use of space, the use of the coldness, the, the use of dummies to illustrate what it would have been like, the atmosphere, the sounds, the stories written, like it was such a haunting experience which painted what it would have been like to be a Korean activist taken into this prison. One of the main points of the day is just wow like the struggle that this country and its people have been through to get to the South Korea that I get to experience today is immense. We toured the palace, we learned about the Choson dynasty, we toured particular churches which were particularly important in the independence movement and all of that was amazing and I learned a lot through this tour and speaking to people and asking people questions but what really solidified the experience, we had a two-hour discussion and debate around certain questions about democracy, transition to democracy, what does a liberal democracy mean, what is an illiberal democracy. One of the main discussion points was this trade-off between prioritizing economic growth with prioritizing social rights. Like to what extent is autocratic regime the way to go in a country's early development compared to fighting for democracy and social rights early, having to wait for long-term growth and long-term education, etc. Also one of the main things I've been thinking about today is like how history is always told from the perspective of the winners. Like in history textbooks, which are approved by the government and often shape the national identity and form of nationalism that they want, you have selective amnesia, where a country selectively forgets less favorable aspects of its history to prioritize a certain national identity, the way they want history told, etc. And like, I come from the UK, and the UK has the darkest history, particularly the colonial period. Why on earth is that not taught to us in schools? What? <laughs> Coming to this university with people from everywhere and having to say, oh yeah, like, yeah, we didn't really cover the colonization of your country. Like it just wasn't really mentioned. They just didn't feel it was important to educate us on it, you know? How the world came to be, how so many countries were, had their countries stolen from them, people killed, people absolutely massacred around the world. Like you get such a bloody history and they hide it so well. We learn about the Tudors and sort of uncontroversial aspects of history like the slave trade, but just not the UK's role in it. Like it's just disappointing. I wish my country owned up to its horrible history more and taught us more about it. Like for example, speaking to my German friends today, it seems that Germany does a pretty good job about educating students about the Holocaust, about World War II, about nationalism, how it went really wrong, how it is so important to shut down that ideology for future generations. I'm going a bit off topic, but education is just so essential in how it shapes your worldview, your perspectives on your identity, the identity of others. Why don't we do a better job in the syllabus? I just. UK government, please. I remember signing a petition last year, I think 250,000 people at least signed a petition to get colonial history on the curriculum of UK history. What happened there? Why did nothing happen, you know? Okay, it's nearly midnight and this is just, uh, I don't know, I'm just chucking thoughts at you in a random order. But yeah, days like today make me feel like, damn Jade, you know absolutely nothing. You need to learn so much more about the world. This country's been through hell to get to where it is today, to have the kind of democracy that it has today, even if that democracy still has issues. Also, how mind-blowing that South Korea, in just 60 years, came from like, came from a literal civil war, came out of the Korean War, a lot of economic issues, poverty, etc. And in 60 years has become this, this like major powerhouse city, hub of economic development in East Asia. It's insane. Like this place has been through so much. People aren't starving anymore. Meat used to be a luxury people couldn't afford every day. Now meat is cheap, you know, economically people can have meat. Who am I to come in and say, please stop eating meat now, you know? South Korea's finally got out of war and colonization and issues. Like let people enjoy this economic development. Thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful evening. And I invite you to think about your country 
in the context of the history lessons you had. How was your story told about the world you know? Who was telling that story? What were their motivations in terms of the national identity they were trying to create, for example? Then maybe go do some digging. Okay, have a wonderful day. Bye. <laughs>